And we're back with Marc Andre Moreau, CTO at Devolutions. Hi, Mark. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Good. Very excited excited. To, to showcase Gateway? Yeah, we have a lot in store for this uh, current release, uh, so uh, we can get right to it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that session, so I'll let Mark drive the show and uh, showcase the what's new with Devolutions Gateway and what's coming up. Uh, so for those that do not know about Devolutions Gateway yet, I've still got a quick overview of the current product. Uh, and then we'll cover the new standalone web access product, which wasn't there before, and the Angrok integration and Kerberos support. Uh, so simply put, what Devotion's Gateway does is it, it acts as a network gateway for multiple protocols. And we have a lot of protocols that are supported through RDM. Uh, so if we begin with the most important RDP, we integrate with different clients like MSTSC, MSRDC, FreeRDP, RNRDP. We also support SSH, including PowerShell remoting. So you get both like the regular SSH and the PowerShell version. VNC, uh, we have our own VNC client and it also supports a real VNC extension. So VNC has a lot of variants and we support most of them. If it is not supported, you can make a feature request, we'll do it. We also support Apple Remote Desktop, and no, Apple Remote Desktop is not standard VNC. There's a big difference in terms of performance. So we have our own ARD client just mm -hmm. for that. WinRM, HTTP and HTTPS for PowerShell remoting. So if you do PowerShell remoting, you can actually make it go through Devotion's Gateway. Uh, LDAP and LDAPS for Active Directory Management. So many different features like synchronizers are also coming to work through Devotion's Gateway. Mm -hmm. uh, websites, so if you have web management consoles, you can also open a new website entry in RDM that goes through Devotion's Gateway. And for all the Kerberos uh, or Windows authentication protocols, you need uh, Kerberos now. So we have uh, built-in KDC proxying for Windows authentication. And uh, we also support that this is new a uh, network scanning feature through Devotions Gateway. So if you use Devotions Gateway to access different uh, network devices, you can actually use it to do the network scan. And yes, this one is funny, but we also support Telnet because somebody told us that uh, Cisco phones apparently come with uh, an add-on for SSH. So you wanted to use it for uh, accessing his Cisco phones. But uh, the, don't be scared. We tunneled it in a secure connection anyway. Uh, in terms of architecture, sometimes it's a bit uh, fuzzy where the, the, the parts fit in. Uh, so the way Devotions Gateway work is strictly at the network level. So in this diagram, you see Remote Desktop Manager or a web client. When you initiate the connection, Remote Desktop Manager will uh, request a token from Devotions Server or Devotions Up. And this token is specific to the destination network resource you want to connect to. So it gets this token and turns around and connects to Devotions Gateway, sends this token at the beginning of the connection. Devotions Gateway validates that the token is good. They, okay, this token is to connect to this RDP story on this port, and it's good for just a few minutes. Makes the connection, and then you're connected through it. You didn't need to open a VPN. It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing for the web client. In the case of the web client, most of uh, the protocols have been adapted to use a WebSocket connection instead of like TCP or uh, other transport protocols. Uh, from RDM, you've probably seen it before, but there is no not much uh, visual difference between the connection made directly and through uh, Devotion's gateway. At the beginning, people were just like, what changed? I haven't seen it. So we added a gateway icon on top of the connection. Because it's so fast, people don't even notice the difference. Uh, so you can open the RDP connection from anywhere. Uh, it's much faster than opening a VPN. We have a question from Kennedy. Is gateway as an Azure hat item for entry into a VNet anything you guys have thought about? Didn't think about it, but we'll think about it now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the feature request. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look into it. We'll look into it. Uh, now for the interesting new uh, feature or product, as we can say in this case, uh, standalone web access. In the previous diagram, you've seen that Gateway was used with uh, uh, RDM and the Devotion Server, Devotion's Hub. But we have excellent web clients and we have an excellent network gateway. And lots of the time, people just want like a web client for RDP, SSH, VNC, and all of those protocols, which we spend so much time building. So we trimmed it out, trimmed it down a lot, so we could just have the web web clients and the versions gateway in a next, next, next installer. You can just deploy and make it work. So it's heavily simplified. The web access client front end just requests a token from the versions gateway in this case, and then it it uses the versions gateway again to make the connection to it. Uh, here it is being shown with an RDP web client connection. It's just, it looks like MSTSC for the web for those that use the uh, built-in RDP client. You just enter like hostname, username, password, click connect, and that's it, it works. And you can also select other protocols in this case. 
let's compare the architecture of uh, Devotion's Gateway in Apache Guacamole, because let's be honest, if you look at the standalone web access, the thing you're probably thinking about is how does this differ from Apache Guacamole, which is one of the most popular alternative to make web-based RDP access. Uh, in our case, we are a true network gateway. So we have a real RDP client in the browser. If you look at Apache Guacamole, what happens is you connect to the Guac uh, Guacamole host, and from this host, it uses a full RDP client to make the connection to the real RDP server, and then just sends images back to the client. And people don't necessarily like this kind of architecture because of the attack surface. Mm -hmm. You have a free RDP client running in the server, and this one is actually making the uh, outgoing connection. And then your web client is a generic web client. It's not truly an RDP web client. In our case, we have Devotion's Gateway acting only as a transport bridge, and Gateway is written entirely in Rust. So you have a much reduced attack surface. So if this is your kind of thing, is like, I want to remove SQL from my proxies, well, we have a solution for you. If we compare Gateway with Azure Bastion, I have news for you. It's the same thing if you compare it with Apache Guacamole because Azure Bastion, Microsoft just repackaged Apache Guacamole, made it super easy to deploy in the, the Azure portal. Uh, so exactly the same arguments uh, apply in this case. If you're looking for a different architecture type, we have the right one. Uh, why would you go for standalone web access versus what we we'll call the full package with RDM, mm -hmm. Devotion Server, Devotion Sub? Yep. Uh, it's just for different use cases. Uh, as I said earlier, we wanted to package like the core value of it, just the web clients and the, uh, the network gateway, and make it super, super easy to deploy. So really, we just like next, 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 no database to set up. It's entirely free. Uh, but the downsides is, well, you don't get all of the other features we can offer, but not in this version. It's like no credential vaulting, no connection entries, no real-based access control, no native client access is web only. But the good news is if you want to have those, we have them already. You just have to go and buy the Ocean Server, the Ocean's Hub, and Remote Desktop Manager, and this is all provided for you. It's exactly the same thing, but packaged differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend looking to the standalone web access for simple use cases or use cases where you just like to access a few VMs or replace Apache Guacamole. So if you use this, it's very lightweight. Uh, knock yourself out, try standalone web access. <laughs> You'll be happy with it. Uh, very interesting feature I'm happy to present to you today. Uh, we have a built-in NGROC integration directly in Devotion's Gateway. Uh, for those that do not know NGROC, uh, it's a product very similar to uh, Cloudflare, Argo Tunnels, Azure App Proxy, or even uh, Tailscale Funnel. It makes it very, very easy to expose services to the internet. And it also does automatic HTTPS. So you don't even have to deal with the certificates. Uh, this may be very useful in, in production use cases if you do not have access to the um, uh, a public IP or certificates. For instance, if you're in a shared uh, workspace, you may not control the infrastructure for inter external access. So NGROC may be a good solution for you. Um, it does not require inbound traffic, and it does not require a public IP. So this is the great thing. And you do not need to install an agent side by side with it because it's directly built into Devotion's Gateway. Uh, even if you do not intend to use NGROC uh, in your production deployment, you can still use it for easy testing because, let's be honest, people don't necessarily want to use like HTTP certificates just for quick testing. They just want to see the thing for working before putting in the work. Uh, so the, you can actually use the NGROC free tier for that. So create a free account uh, and then try it out, see if you like it, and then spend the time making a proper uh, production deployment. This is just the NGROC dashboard. If you create a free account today, you just need to go into places. You generate your free domain. You don't have control over the free domain you get. It's just generated. Uh, unless you pay, of course. You can use your own domain. And then your ad token. And this, these are the only two things you need to put in to the uh, uh, Devotion's Gateway MSI installer. So as you install it and to the next, next, next steps, you will have the options to enable NGROC access from the internet. And then just paste in your ad token, your domain. And then you won't be prompted for certificates or things like that. They will just be exposed directly on the internet. Last but not least, uh, Kerberos support. It may seem a bit boring, but we spent uh, years, years on developing this entire solution. And uh, we're happy to tell you that we have the world's first uh, Kerberos web client. 
because not even Microsoft does this, but we can do Kerberos from a true web client. Uh, the way it works is uh, when you look at the Kerberos, Kerberos has the, um, the, the it's using Windows authentication, of course, uh, but it always requires a different uh, out of bound, uh, out of band uh, communication with the Kerberos KDC. So very technical things too. If you're not on the, to the corporate network and can talk to the domain controller, there is no Kerberos happening. And then it downgrades to an TLM and then TLM is bad for various reasons. Uh, from your web client, you don't necessarily have access to that. So it needs to go through the evolutions gateway to reach a Kerberos KDC and then perform Kerberos fully. And we've implemented Kerberos directly in the browser as well to make this happen. If you don't use the web client, if you use Remote Desktop Manager, we work very, very hard to make um, just this time uh, KDC proxying possible. So instead of configuring it globally on your system, it actually injects the KDC proxy information into the RDP web client so that you can just make the connection work. So if you're an MSP, you have 100 different uh, domains. Uh, this is extremely useful. You get Kerberos uh, instantly. And then you don't need like to make a lot of configurations on your system to support 100 different uh, uh, well domains separately. It's just like uh, automatically handled for you. If we look again at uh, the Gateway versus Azure Bastion, there is a big difference there again. Because if you recall, in the case of Azure Bastion, the RDP client is in the Bastion host. So this means that when you, you enable the Kerberos feature in Azure Bastion, all you're really doing is you're just enabling the FreeRDP client and the Bastion host to do Kerberos with the final server. So from the web client point of view, you're actually just pushing the credentials to Azure Bastion, the Azure Bastion host. In our case, we just go through the Evolutions Gateway to reach the Kerberos KDC, and we have a real uh, Kerberos client in the browser, which Microsoft doesn't do. Uh, so we're the first to do it. I don't know how much time we have, but oh, yeah, actually, you have time left. I have don't time worry. Left. Okay. I don't know. Um, let me check if we have any questions. That's nice from Holy Hanainen. I hope I did that the right way. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Holy Hanainen. Nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's really nice. A lot of work behind all, all this infrastructure, right, Mark? And, yes. Uh, a lot of years uh, deploying. And a lot of it is open source, actually. So we contribute yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of uh, this work to the open source community. All written in Rust. So memory safe, if you've been watching the yep. news from the White memory House unsafe. that bans me memory unsafe languages. Uh, in the, the video, I'm just showing like the setup with the NGROC free tier. So really simple. I, I just want to show how easy it is to just like download an MSI installer, click next, next, X with just a few options there and have something fully functional that can make an, uh, um, an RDP connection from using our RDP web client. Just a few moments. Yeah. There you go. So I don't know if any of you already know Angrok, but uh, we've been watching them for years. They they may be more popular for developer tooling, but they have excellent services for production environments. Uh, maybe consider them as an alternative to uh, Azure App Proxy which has a lot of limitations that are very, very hard to work around to make uh, certain features possible. That's it. You may see the performance is not uh, excellent. We fixed that in the final release. So let's see the Apple Remote Desktop. And this is important because some people may use Apache uh, Guacamole today to access uh, Macs. But the thing is, uh, Guacamole only supports standard VNC. And while it's possible to use standard VNC to connect to a Mac, the thing is uh, the, the protocol and the codecs it supports in standard VNC is very, very bad in terms of performance. And the only way to get better performance with a Mac with the built-in uh, VNC server is truly to use Apple Remote Desktop, which is a very, very different protocol. So it's based on VNC in the sense that it begins like a standard VNC connection, but it uses completely different codecs. Codecs are undocumented that we had to reverse engineer. And now what we have is, well, the, technically, the world's first Apple Remote Desktop web client, 
Uh, I didn't talk about it until now, but yes, it's actually the first one I worked in the browser because uh, we've had it for years uh, in the remote desktop manager into our desktop application, but we had to rewrite it entirely in Rust to make it work inside the browser. Uh, so if you, you're looking for a good Guacamole alternative that will work better uh, with all of your systems, well, we have that. Uh, you talked about different use cases. Uh, can you explain a little bit more where you would see uh, the use case where you would want to use that web app uh, through the gateway, uh, we can think about, you know, uh, we can, you can quickly access your home lab, for example, or give access to uh, uh, client-less access to uh, yeah. part of our infrastructure for members outside of our organization. Do you have other use cases in mind you want well, to share? Well, the client-less uh, remote access is uh, a very good use case. Mm -hmm. uh, so installing a full desktop application has its advantages, but when you need to uh, give access to somebody outside of the organization, it's usually more of a problem because the machine is not managed by the organization. So you can actually use the web clients for that purpose because it's fully clientless. So uh, not necessarily the standalone web access, but we have it inside Devotion Server and uh, Devotion's Hub. So this is something that's uh, problematic for you. You're looking for a good way to uh, give access to your systems to external uh, consultants, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. We're, we're slowly rebuilding all of Remote Desktop Manager in, in the web. Uh, if mm -hmm. you look at it this way, it's very exciting that we have the technology stack available today to make this happen, where 10 years ago, it was very difficult to imagine doing something similar to that. We have two questions. One, uh, does the RDP web client also work with client certificates? We use smart cards for RDP. Put in a feature request. We have some, <laughs> we, we have some exciting work uh, being done on uh, virtual smart cards. And we also work closely with Teleport, which also does virtual smart cards. So if you look at their product, they're actually using a new RDP5 client. Uh, surprise, surprise, they're collaborating with us on the same RDP5 client. So they, they migrated over to our web, web client. But we're also building a uh, virtual smart card uh, stack that would be ported to the web. Uh, so put in a feature request because this is more like I'm coming up with this uh, excellent feature that I'm hoping people want. And if you want it, well, I'm happy that you confirmed that people want it. Awesome. Next question. We have a question again from Kalani. Uh, will you look at a design for Gateway where it is calling the Devotion server from behind a firewall, trying to avoid opening firewall ports long term? Uh, if you want to restrict access, the Devotion Gateway is designed to be the most exposed service in the diagram. So you want to lock down access to Devotion server much more than you want to lock down access to Devotion's Gateway. But the thing is, some people may prefer to have two separate layers of network security. So it is possible to put a VPN in front of Devotion's Gateway if you want to, but we've designed it such that you don't need to. So it's really a choice that's made up to you. Mm -hmm. It's actually an advantage uh, compared to other solutions that completely replace uh, the inbound traffic by some magic outbound traffic to a service like Tailscale, uh, where you only end up with one control layer. Because we still work with inbound traffic, well, you can actually use your regular tooling like firewall rules and things like that to uh, restrict access. And this is something we've learned uh, the, the hard way with Wake, which is our pr uh, previous product from which the, the current Devotions Gateway is derived, is that when we, we arrive with this solution that bypass all of the firewalls that people have put in place, well, the IT administrators were not very happy about that. So, so mm -hmm. we've worked this like this such that how, which firewall rule do I need to add? Well, there's an answer there. So we don't bypass it, we just work with it. So thanks, Mark, for joining us. We have, uh, uh, the next session is with uh, you, Maurice, and David. Uh, so this is it's gonna be the closing remarks. So uh, we're gonna discuss a little bit more about all those solutions, how they work all together with uh, the whole engineering team here. Mm -hmm.